Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, I just finished recording a uh, just finished recording a video on a MacBook Pro, which not only was a no fix, but also I spent half a day dicking around with it, only to realise that the microphone had been muted for the entire video as well. So uh, yeah. Uh, so I've decided that in order to cheer myself up, I'm going to take apart a different MacBook instead. <laughs> oh, what is my life? So here's a MacBook Air. We've got to replace the keyboard on this guy um, because some of the keys aren't working. So we're going to put a new keyboard in it. It's only missing like two or three keys, I think. However, once a couple have gone, more will probably follow. And also, those missing keys are certain letters, and it's like, yeah, a keyboard that's got a couple of letters that don't 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 work is worthless. Um, yeah, so let's get on with it. I'm taking the screws out of the bottom. These are five point pentalobe screws. Uh, you need a one point two millimeter pentalobe screwdriver for this. If you search eBay for uh, um, MacBook security screwdriver, you'll be able to buy one for like a quid. So we'll take these out, then we're going to take the bottom cover off, and I'm going to disconnect the battery. There we go. Right, now I'm going to switch out to a T5 screwdriver and remove the battery. And now we've got to gut the rest of the laptop out. So uh, I'm going to start by um, taking out the logic board and the speakers, and then we'll get down to the keyboard itself. So there's a reasonable amount to do. You start over at this end at the I.O. board and the cooling fan. So we'll take those out, disconnect the other cable going to the I.O. board, and we'll take the screws out for that. Does the fan need to come out first? Yeah, the fan comes out first. I can never remember. This has been disassembled before because all the screws are in the wrong places. I'm not sure if that's my handiwork from the past. It might have been. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not suffered any damage, just observations. Sometimes I do see stuff that I've worked on in the past and I notice my old mistakes, which happens. But that's how you grow as a uh, as a technician as well, is just sometimes seeing your old work and going, hmm, I could have done that better. Always learning. No one is a master. The uh, audio cable here has given me some issues. This guy's a bastard. This it goes to the um, goes to the microphones. There we go. There's just nothing to hold on to there. There we go. There's our I.O. board. So that's got the um, DC jack on it and uh, a USB port and audio stuff. It's actually got the audio IC on it as well. So if you've got audio problems, this guy probably needs to be replaced. Okay. Right. So now I can go ahead and remove the logic board. I'm going to disconnect all the wires going to it first. And uh, then we'll take all the screws out. And you've got to watch out because there is a screw at the end of the heat pipe here under the Wi-Fi antennas. Little bastard screw that catches everyone out. Okay, I think I've got everything. So we'll hold on to the um, hold on to the heat pipe and just try and lift this up. Something feels like it's holding on. Is there another screw underneath the SSD? I think there is. Yeah, there it is. You don't have to know where every screw is. You just got to test and find out. There we go. That's moving. What else is holding us back? Nope, that's ready to go. So now it's holding on just in this corner here. The the logic board just tucks under this screw hole to anchor it in place. So we'll just flip that up and just uh, just wiggle it out. There we go. Put that logic board to one side. Actually, I'm going to inspect it while I've got it in my hand. 
Yeah, there's the usual dust. Nothing I'm particularly fussed about though. I can just go straight back in. Right, so the speakers are not screwed in. These are just held in with double-sided tape. So I'm just gonna gently just pull those out. These have been taken out before because this double-sided tape is not lined up properly. This thing has obviously had a full strip down before. Again, it might have been by me, I'm not sure. Okay, right, so now I'm gonna remove the keyboard backlight. So I'm gonna get a prying tool and I need to dig in underneath the layers of the backlight. So we'll start by going under this black backing. Just peel that back a little bit. Trying not to rip it. It's not the end of the world if you do some damage to this. I've actually got, have I got a replacement backlight? Yeah, I have a complete replacement backlight for this anyway, so I could actually just rip this out, but we'll take it off carefully just for posterity. Right, so there's the first layer, then we've got a hard plastic layer, and then a white plastic layer, and then you'll go down to the metal at the back of the keyboard. So I've got to get, I've got my prime tool right down to the metal, and we'll just lift the entire backlight up together. Right, yeah, this one's disintegrating. Um, yeah, this happens sometimes. This is exactly why I bought a new backlight. So I'm just going to remove this cable to give myself more space to move. Okay, so the third layer, um, we had the back layer, then we had the hard plastic layer, and then the third layer, this one, sometimes this just, sometimes this happens, basically, where it will not come off and you just shred it. If you don't have a replacement backlight, this is not the end of the world. You can just put those two layers on and it will work. Um, obviously, these layers are just there to optimize the backlight. They help funnel the light into the right places so it's not illuminating bits of metal. They try and direct the light so it's only shining up through the keycaps. However, yeah, just sometimes this, this, these layers will just come apart and tear to shreds. Um, but yeah, when you're buying a replacement keyboard, I get mine from eBay. Um, you can usually buy it with or without a backlight. And with a backlight is normally about, I don't know, less than $10 extra. I think it was another five or six pounds for me. And I just think that spending that little bit extra and getting the, back, the replacement backlight is a good idea just in case this happens. So I'll just try and get as much of that off as I can. You'll see why in a moment. That'll do for now. Okay, so the, um, uh, the MacBook Air keyboard has a mixture of screws and rivets in it. Um, so the first thing I need to do is disconnect the keyboard. So for that, I'll show you a close up. So underneath the keyboard flex ribbon here, if I just pull that up, you can see the connect is actually underneath the ribbon. So we've just got to just tension that lead, then go in there with some tweezers and just flip the locking bar up. There we go. So now that locking bar is open, it will just pull out like that. And that's it, that's now unlocked. So the keyboard is held in with a mixture of screws and rivets. So first we're gonna go around and undo all of the screws. So these are gonna be double O Phillips. They're very fine screws. So you might wanna have a magnetic mat or just a magnet on hand to gather these up with. Failing that, as you can see, I'm just placing them to one side, but I will collect those up with a magnet in a moment. And again, you'll see why. Okay, that's all the screws out. And now to deal with the rivets, we're gonna rip the keyboard out. So I'm gonna get a prying tool underneath the keyboard and just peel up one corner. And yes, this will destroy the keyboard. So, you know, if you're taking your keyboard out, you are replacing it. So now I'm literally gonna unceremoniously just rip the damn thing out and just rip all of these rivets out. The rivets are gonna go flying. So I'm gonna try and cover with my hand as best I can. If 
If you don't wear glasses, wear safety specs. Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to gather up these screws. However, we've, we've come this far now. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Old keyboard removed. And looking at the keyboard, it's grotty as hell, as old keyboards usually are. And I fancy that I can see a little bit of tidal marks there on the uh, inset, which might denote that there's been some liquid damage to this thing at some point in the past. And that might be why it's got problems. A little bit around the escape key. Let me see if I can get that on camera for you so you know what to look for. There you go. See around that hole, you can see that shiny stuff there. So yeah, just little telltale giveaways that this keyboard has probably seen some liquid at some point. I'm not saying that what that's what has killed it, but you never know. That would be my guess. Okay, right, so now I'm gonna gather up all these little screws on a magnet anyway, after all of that. And that means I can now just take this uh, body away and just get all of this that's just come out of the keyboard after all of that abuse. I'm gonna wipe all of this away and just dust it all down. Okay, right, now I'm just gonna hang the, uh, I've just hung the keyboard off the back of the counter. So I can, as you can see, we've just got the countertop through here now, or rather the mat that I work on. And I'm gonna grab my uh, glass cleaner and I'm just going to take some ordinary window and glass cleaning spray that you can find at any supermarket. And I'm just going to spritz the back of the keyboard with it. Just a little bit. We're not drowning it, just a light spray, just so it's all damp. And I'll take a uh, paint uh, paintbrush, take a toothbrush. I'm just going to go around all the keyholes just to get any schmutz out of the way. Go and I'll just carefully go around the rest of the laptop while I'm here. If you're really going to town on your uh, MacBook Air, or if it's if you're replacing it after liquid damage and stuff like that, um, I would recommend removing the trackpad as well, which is another six screws out there, three and three, and the trackpad will come out, and then you can just clean around the inside of the trackpad bay as well. Uh, or replace the trackpad if you need to. Just drying off any excess now. The good thing about the glass cleaner is that it will evaporate and leave no residue behind, which is why I use it. Because unlike uh, unlike other cleaning fluids, it will not leave uh, anything behind, which is the important thing. Good, okay, that's fine. I think we're ready to put in our new keyboard. Right, so when we put the keyboard back in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in half of the screws around the outside again, just putting in every other screw. And that will leave us with a decent amount of screws left over, and those will go into holes in the middle. We can actually put these screws just straight into those holes, and because it's soft aluminium, they'll just self-tap into the metal. Uh, and that means we don't have to reuse any rivets or anything like that. But we've gotta make sure that a decent number of these rivets have actually come out. So I'm now just going to take a, um, I'm going to take my bad set of uh, side cutters, the ones I don't care about. There we go, these ones, and I'm going to use these just to lift out these remaining rivets. So we don't have to remove all of the the rivets, but just a decent number of them. Some of them won't want to come out. All right, that was a poor start. How about that one? There we go. I'll give you a close up of that just so you can see what I'm doing. So we just go on to with the back of the cutters there, just dig in a little bit and then just lever upwards. And out it comes. I'll try and do that without jogging the camera this time. Oh, that one came out super easy. Yeah. 
just like that. So I'm just going to do that across the whole keyboard and just clear out a whole bunch of holes. And then we'll have somewhere to put in screws afterwards. And if you've got one that doesn't want to come out, that's fine. We're not going to populate every one of these. There we go. I think that's my lot. Um, I, had quite a, I had quite a couple along here that didn't want to come out and a few around the middle, but that's the worst of it. And for the record, uh, these are just cheap Chinese side cut, flush cut side cutters here. Um, if you are worried about messing up your side cutters, you should have another set, basically. Um, side cutters like these, they're like two pounds, two pound fifty on eBay China. Like, go buy some now while you're watching this video. Just go and order two or three of them for less than five dollars or five pounds and just get them on order. They'll take a couple of weeks to arrive and you'll just have some cheap expendable tools where it doesn't matter if you screw them up doing crap stuff with them. And that way you just abuse them. And when you've just, when you've wrecked the tip, the tip of them, you chuck them out, you get another set out. And while you've got them in stock, you order another set on a slow boat from China. So yeah, pro tip. Cool, so we've moved over though all of those. Let's get our keyboard in. And now that it's positioned, I'm gonna put in um, every other screw. We'll put one in each corner, and then I'll put in a screw, jump a hole, screw, jump a hole, and so on. Okay, right, now I've done the outside, I'm gonna start putting screws into the middle. And I'm going to try and roughly dot them around because I don't know how many spare I'll have. But we'll start with, uh, I'm going to try and stagger them. So for example, we've got screw there, a screw there. So I'll put a screw in there. So we'll get a rough honeycomb pattern, if you see what I mean. That's the mission. Although, of course, because of depending on what... Um, Depending on what uh, uh, rivets came out and what rivets didn't come out, that may limit your options. But use a bit of creativity. We want to fill in as many of the holes as we can. And as I say, if you can, and optionally, you can buy extra screws from eBay and just populate until you've run out of holes if you want. But in my experience, it's normally not necessary. Uh, Apple keyboards are famous for having no flex in them whatsoever, and this is how they do it. Um, but conversely, uh, they do have an overkill number of screws in them as well. You can put in this number of screws and still have no visible flex. There we go. I've more or less just skipped that row there, because that's, that's where the F keys are. And we've got more screws along here anyway, so we can just skip that row entirely. And we'll go down to this row here. There we go. Here's my collection of extra screws. Put those away with my other spare screws. <clears throat> okay, and that keyboard is fitted. And if I just quickly test it, yeah, there's no flex there. That's all good. Good. Okay, let's put the new backlight on. So that goes this way around. And we'll find that there's screw, screw there so we know how to line it up. Been a while since I've fitted a brand new one of these. So I'll take off that top bit and the blue bit to expose the new adhesive. 
And if you're reusing an old backlight and the adhesive is all knackered, don't worry, it's fine. Just lay it in place. By the time you've got everything else fitted into the laptop, once you've got the logic board and all everything else crammed on top of it, it won't move. It'll be fine. I Most of the time I reuse backlights. Oops, that's not quite straight. How did that happen? Let's start with that middle one. There we go. There we go, now that's on properly. I'll just go around and seal that. Of course, it does bear mention that having this backlight seal around the keyboard does provide a moderate amount of protection against liquid damage. Not immunity, but certainly a modest amount of protection. I think a lot of liquid spills that MacBooks survive, it survives in thanks to the fact that this uh, keyboard is um, slightly sealed, at least. So there's that. Okay. Yeah. And then for the curious, you can see the actual backlight circuit there. So it's just got a smattering of LEDs that go back to this little wire here. Cool. Right. Let's get it plugged in. So I've got to flip this guy over. Give you guys the close up again. So we'll flip that guy around and plug him in. And then just press the locking lever down. And now I'll just fold that down. There we go. That'll do. That's all we need. Okay, let's get this case populated. So I'm going to start with the logic board. And just brush off the, uh, the dust while I'm here. The fin stack on these things are so small that you only need a tiny little bit of dust to make a blockage on that. The uh, MacBook Air does not have a lot of cooling on it, but that much being said, it doesn't make a lot of heat. It's not exactly a quick computer, this thing. It's a netbook, basically. So let's get that lined up in the back corner again. If the camera will stop shaking, there we go. So I'm gonna guide this corner in underneath that little hook first, then just straighten that in. And taking care not to trap the Wi-Fi antennas underneath there, we'll just lay that logic board down. And then over on the left side here, I need to make sure that that screw hole thing goes underneath the Wi-Fi antennas. There we go. And then the rubber bit, I'll show you where that goes in a sec. We'll leave that flapping in the breeze while we screw it in place. I'll just stick another screw in the middle just to make sure it doesn't fall out. Okay, so this little bit is an air guide. It stops the warm air coming out the back of the fin stack from recycling back over into the fan. So at this side, it needs to go underneath the fin stack. So that side has to be correct when you put the logic board back in. Uh, this side, so left hand on camera, uh, it just tucks into this little gap here just goes through there. So we'll just guide that back into place. And I find that it never feels like it's in properly, no matter what you do with it. So you kind of just squash it into place and just, that's it really. It doesn't matter too much. That'll do. Okay, next I'm gonna put the IO board back in. So for the I.O. board screws, this guy in the middle here is a normal length screw. Then there are a couple of other variations that you'll see. There is a short screw here. This shorter one goes in that hole there with the fan. Uh, because this one needs to be shorter because a normal length screw will go too deep into this hole and it'll start drilling into the logic board, which is called long screw damage. And if you long screw into the logic board, you can cause yourself a major problem 
which might even be terminal damage unless you're a micro soldering expert. So don't do that. Then on this side, we use this weird one that's got the tall, the tall hat on it. I don't know why this has a tall head on it. It just does, and it goes in there. And because I've got quite an old model here, the um, uh, EyeSight webcam plugs into the I.O. board there. On the newer models with the HD cameras, those plug in to the lodge board. I'm slipping with my screwdriver here. Be careful with that. I'm not doing any damage there, but just watch out for that. So we normally this cable here would go under the logic the under the I/O board, go around the fan, and it would plug in over here. But we've got quite an old model here, so that guy's going to go in there. And let's get our fan into place. And the fan, I'm just going to go and give this a quick black with the air compressor just to clear the dust out of it. Okay, right. We'll feed the power cable for the fan in first because it's not very long. So having the fan free in your hands gives you a bit of extra movement. Ugh. I might have been better off doing this before plugging that guy in actually. There we go, that's done it. So the white line now lines up with the edge of that connector. And now we'll close the locking bar. And sit that guy down. Just root it underneath the uh, rubber air guide. Oh, I put that screw in too early. What an idiot. My bad. Now it goes in. There we go. Okay, now I'll put my short boy screw into there. And we'll put another screw into there. And now we can put the rest of the screws into the logic board. Sorry if I jog the camera while doing this, it's hard to work underneath it. Right, now connect up any remaining wires you've got to your logic board. So, Wi-Fi antennas, the display cable, um, the uh, keyboard backlight, then the keyboard ribbon I've got to put back in as well. And we've also got to put on the I.O. ribbon, which I'm going to put on now because I always forget this guy. Forgot about our uh, microphone cable over here. There we go. I just made that look super easy. That's a little bastard, that cable. Take care when plugging the display connector back in. If you chip the corner of this guy, you will have a bad day. Hello. I saw a MacBook Air the other day that had a um, it had an adapter from the Apple SSD connector to an M.2 connector, and it worked just fine with just a regular M.2 SSD in it. Couldn't believe it. Years I've just been buying secondhand Apple SSDs. You can just use ordinary M.2 SSDs in the newer ones with M.2 adapters. I always thought those were cobblers. Okay, let's get our uh, um, speakers back in. So these just press down because it's just double-sided tape. And just reconnect the cable for that. Where's the other one? There it is. And then I think it's just the, uh, it's just the battery now. Good, right, battery can go on top. So the battery has got two short screws and three long ones. The short ones go near the front of the laptop here, and the long ones go in the back corners in the middle. Uh, 
All right, and last check. Looks good, reconnect the battery. Okay, back cover on, and I'm just gonna put on a couple of screws just to hold the back cover on while we test it. Just so there's slightly fewer screws I have to take out if this doesn't work. Although considering the amount of screws that go in the keyboard, that would be a somewhat of a shallow victory. <laughs> right, hopefully this thing is charged. Looks good. So you'll probably find lots of dust and grit on the top of the laptop and probably on the screen as well after doing this much work on it. Because it'll all come out from the old keyboard and that kind of thing. Um, so um, uh, don't worry about it for now. We'll just confirm it works and then I'm going to wipe it all down again and just make it nice and shiny and clean. Right, please excuse the uh, covering up of user data because I'm too lazy to um, uh, I'm too lazy to blur it in post. So um, number keys are all good. QWERTY op is all good. Second row, third row, and command A for a combination is fine. Shift letters for capitals is fine. Backspace is fine. Volume controls are fine. Uh, caps lock on, caps lock off. So that's all good. All the usual things that I expect to see issues with. So keyboard combinations and that kind of thing. Those are all fine. This keyboard works just fine. Right. Now I've just got to put the last of these screws in and give the laptop a clean up. So you can hang around for that if you want. Otherwise, we're all done. And that is how you replace a MacBook Air keyboard. Uh, if you have a uh, like a 20, what is it, a 2018? One of the new style ones, the MacBook Air Retina. I don't know how to do one of those. I haven't looked at those yet. I try to steer clear of the brand new ones because they're spooky. Can't help you there, I'm afraid. However, the MacBook Air didn't really change much between like 2012 and 2017, I think. Um, so like right up until almost recent, they're all roughly the same inside. They're not identical. There were a couple of refreshes over the years, but they're very, very similar. That's that done. Uh, so now I'm just gonna give this a nice clean. So I'll get my uh, soft cloth. I move my coffee out of the way so I don't fill it with uh, cleaning chemicals. And window and glass, spritz, spritz. Fold the cloth into quarters. And we're gonna go wipe, wipe, wipe. Hold down option, to stop it starting up. Turn to the dry side of the cloth. White, 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 white. Pull down option, stop it starting up again. I miss the days of removable batteries. It made this a lot easier. Wipe the screen down. Dry side of the cloth again. And buff to a shine. There we go. And if you want to, you can also use um, multi-surface polish on the keyboard and trackpad just to get that every little bit extra of silky smoothness. Um, I'm not gonna bother on this one because it feels nice and clean already. Don't use the multi-surface polish on the LCD of this one. You can, you can use that on a MacBook Pro that's glass fronted, but multi-surface polish on a bare LCD like this doesn't end well. You get a smeary mess, it's horrid. Do the back side as well. Wet side, clean down. Dry side, buff to a sheen. Lovely. Thank you very much for watching everyone. See you all next time. Bye for now.